Hi, my dear friends. Welcome to another episode of Dr. Arya's Vlogs. Today, I am going to share some important MCQs in the branch of prosthodontics. So today I am going to cover some questions related to complete denture out of which impression procedures is today's topic. Coming to the questions. The first question is which is the primary stress bearing area of maxillary complete denture? The options are alveolar ridge, buccal flange, groove gay, posterior palatal seal area. Coming to the discussion part. This picture shows very stress bearing areas in the maxilla. Okay. So this one is the primary stress bearing area. That is horizontal slopes of heart palate. And rest are secondary. So this one B is crust of residual alveolar ridge. C, C. Where is C? C is secondary. Okay, secondary stress bearing area and it is rugae and uh, D is maxillary tuberosity. So, one primary stress bearing area is horizontal slopes of heart palate. Then secondary are crust of residual alveolar ridge, rugae and maxillary tuberosity. So, as we know, alveolar ridge, it is the Residual bone with mucous membrane. The primary stress bearing area only when covered by thick mucoperiosteum or else it is a secondary stress bearing area. So, out of which uh, the options given, the alveolar ridge is the best option. So, what is the answer? Alveolar ridge. Okay. Coming to second question. Primary stress bearing area of mantula edangulus ridge. The options are buccal shelf, crust of the ridge, retromolar pad and retromylohyde space. So coming to the discussion part. Obviously, it is a direct question. So what is this picture? This picture shows the primary stress bearing area in the mandible, that is buccal shelf area. Okay. And in this picture, it shows secondary stress bearing areas in the mandible, that is Labial slope of the residual ridge and the lingual slopes of the residual ridge. Okay. And the buccal shelf, it is located on the mandibular arch and is important to mandibular denture fabrication because it is the primary stress bearing area of the mandibular arch. This one is the residual ridge. Okay. So here it is the buccal shelf area. And it is important because of it is uh, it acts as the primary stress bearing area of the mandibular arch. And here, the in this picture, it shows boundary of a buccal shelf area. Medially, it is bounded by crust of the ridge. Laterally, by external oblique ridge. Then the anteriorly, it is by buccal frena. And distally, retromolar pad. So, these are the boundaries of buccal shelf area. Okay. And here, the buccal shelf lies at the right angles to the vertical occlusal forces and is covered with good smooth cortical bone. Okay. And the total width of this region is actually becomes greater with the bone resorption. Hence, it is the primary stress bearing area of the mandible, even though mucous membrane may not be histologically suitable for this. So, the uh, buccal shelf area is considered as the primary stress bearing area in the mandible. So, the answer is obviously buccal shelf. Okay. Coming to the next question, what is the mean denture bearing area in edentulous mandible? The options are 12.25 cm square, 16.25, 18.12 and 20.25. Coming to discussion. Size of the denture bearing area. Okay. 
According to 12th edition Boucher, the maxillary edangulus area, that is the average size of maxillary denture bearing area, is around 24 square centimeter, and that of the mandibular is about 14 square centimeter. So it is the maxillary and it is the mandibular denture bearing area. But according to 10th edition, it is written. The answer is 12.25 cm square according to 10th edition Bausch. Okay. And 14 cm square according to 12th edition Bausch. Coming to the next question. An overextended distal corner of a mandibular denture will push against which muscle during function? So the options are sagomaticus, orbicularis oris, temporalis and masseter. So which are the muscles of mastication? Masseter, temporalis, medial tergoil and lateral tergoil. These are the muscles of mastication. So here it is the masseter muscle. Here it is the temporalis muscle and this is the medial tergoil. And this is the lateral tergoid. Okay, these are the muscles of mastication. And the masseter muscle, this is the superficial portion and this is the deep portion. Okay, and the function is elevation of the mandible. And the superficial layer of the masseter muscle, it originates from the zygomatic process of maxilla and it inserts at the angle and lower lateral side of the ramus of the mantle. Okay, this is the origin and insertion of muscle to muscle. And the tergomandibular raphe which lies between the buccinator and superior constructor muscle. Okay. And in this picture it shows the denture border outline which reveals the very overextended preliminary denture impression. Okay, this is the denture border outline. And it reveals the overextended preliminary denture impression. Okay. And in this pictures, in these pictures, this patient complained of overextension after delivery. And it was evaluated with a thick pressure indication paste. Okay. So pressure indication paste is applied to check the overextension. In this picture, the patient had implants and the denture was maintained in the position. This slight overextension caused discomfort. Okay. So there is a slight overextension in this, in this, in this picture. This part. Okay. Slight overextension is there. And considerable extension was achieved into the posterior mylohyoid area. Okay. This is the overextension in the denture. Okay. So this is a very common area of overextension and should be checked very well when delivering the mandibular denture. Buccinator muscle lies under the denture flange in this area but the fibers run anteroposterior in a horizontal plane and their action is weak. And in the fibers of masseter muscle pass outside the buccinator at the buccal corner of mandibular denture and which may push against the buccinator during function causing dislodgement. Okay. So, the correct option is masseter. So, coming to the next question. Which material is carried in a custom tree? The options are high fusing compound, reversible hydrocolloid, metallic oxide paste and irreversible hydrocolloid. Silicone or metallic oxide paste or rubber based materials are used in a custom tray during final impression. Impression compound, reversible and reversible hydrocolloids like agar, alginate, they are used in a stock tray for preliminary impression. So, metallic oxide paste is the correct option. Next question, which one of the following is not essential for primary impression? 
The options are retention, stability, phonetics and aesthetics. So coming to the discussion part. The word press. It is a small mnemonic to remember the objectives of impression making. What is P? It is preservation of remaining structures. Then R for retention. E for aesthetics. S for stability and another S for support. So these are the objectives of impression making. Okay. Hence the phonetics is not in this objectives of impression making. This phonetics is the answer. So phonetics is not essential for primary impression. All others are very essential for a primary impression. That is retention, stability, aesthetics, then preservation of remaining structures and support. Okay. Next question. Which is the emergency retentive force for a maxillary complete edge? The options are soft palate, hard palate, posterior palatal seal and the base of the tongue. Coming to the discussion part. The peripheral seal is the area of contact between peripheral borders of the denture and the resilient limiting structure. And this peripheral seal prevents air entry between denture surface and the soft tissue. Hence, a low pressure is maintained within the space between the denture and soft tissue. And this is the Picture showing when the dislodging forces act on a properly extended denture. The pressure between the prosthesis and the mucosa drops which contribute to retention. Okay. The retention due to atmospheric pressure is directly proportional to area covered by the denture base. And the emergency retentive force or temporary retraining force is atmospheric pressure. It is about 40.7 lb per square inch and it is effective only when there is adequate peripheral seal or post parameter seal. Hence the correct option is posterior parameter seal. Okay. And the coming to the next question. Lingual flange of lower denture. What is its shape? Is it concave or convex or straight or convex and towards the base of the tongue? According to Sorrento et al, the shape and contour of the lingual flange of the mandibular denture should slope slightly inwards from above downwards. And this will prevent the displacement of the lower denture. So the answer is concave. Okay. The lingual flange of lower denture is concave. According to textbook of Sarato. Next question is Mustetric notch is formed by the action of vaccinator on masseter, masseter on vaccinator, Superior constrictor on vaccinators and vaccinator on superior constrictor. So, what is this massive trick notch? Okay. Just buckle to the crust of the mandibular ridge. This is the crust of the mandibular ridge. And just buckle to it in the disturbed buckle corner of the arch. Here is an area or space known as massive trick notch or groove area. Okay. This is the Masseteric notch. And this is the most distal extent of the inner surface of mandibular ridges, which ends in an area called the lutromyelohyde area or fossa. And this space that is it is influenced by the action of masseter. Okay. So when masseter contracts, it pushes inward against the vaccinator, producing a bulge into the mouth. And this bulge can be recorded only when the masseter contracts. And it is reproduced as a notch in the denture flange. 
it is called a muscle trait match so the correct option is masseter on buccinator so that is the masseteric notch which is formed by the action of masseter on buccinator so move on to the last mcq of today's lecture muscle which has influence in the formation of buccal frenum of maxilla is the options are ligature angular oris quadratus labii superioris triangularis and inferioris as we all know there are three frenae that is one labial and two buccal in maxilla and four frenae that is one labial two buccal and one lingual in mandible the buccal frenum of maxilla it contains caninus or levator angular oris and buccal frenum of mandible contains triangularis or depressor angular oris so the correct answer is levator angular oris okay so these are the selected multiple choice questions from the topic impression procedures in complete tincture that's all for today's lecture thanks for watching stay home stay safe and please do like share and subscribe my channel thank you